Hey there kids, it's me again. I am putting out a quick video to talk about what we've done this week and what is going to be our plans for the upcoming month in the development of our game. Uh, for this week, the only thing... We haven't done that much. The only big change that I've done is I fixed the, the most serious bug we had in our 0 0.3 release, which was sometimes enemies would get stuck on platforms when they were trying to pathfind, so if the player was below them, they would try to detect them, but they couldn't drop down. So we added a little timer. When, when the when the enemy dropped down, it would register collision, and then instantly would be put back up. So we had to add a little timer before it enab enabled collision with the platform again. So with that out of the way, we should be at a pretty stable game now, without too many flaws. Except for this arrow, I don't know what that's doing there. It's probably an enemy died before on the spikes. Stupid arrow. Okay, we have to... I'll, I'll write that down. We have to fix that. So, as of... Oh, yeah. Uh, as of this month, I'll talk a little bit about what our plans are. But uh, a, another quick announcement I have is... I've been doing a little bit of procrastination. Uh, nothing new. So I've been doing a few side projects with Unity that I thought about making a little tutorial videos for and posting on the Unity forum, so feel free to check those out if you wanna if you wanna see what I've been doing and check out some interesting Unity projects. It's one thing I've done is I've made a system for switching uh, clothes on a 3D character, which is totally unrelated to race. It's just I did it because I've all ever since I was a kid I've always wondered how they did that. You had to switch out the mesh and you had to have a uh, a different uh, full body mesh for every set of, for every possible combination and permutation of the clothes that you want to put on the character or how do they do it but it turns out you can very easily just make a mesh for every garment and target the bones to the parent skeleton so I'll, I'll, I'll show you quickly how you can do it on Unity with a simple script and the second thing I've done is I've been fiddling around with the vehicle physics for another short title I'm building so so if you don't know Unity has a standard asset with a little vehicle that you uh, a car that you can toy with. You can set the settings and set the physics to whatever you want, but it's you can you can't get away from the very arcadey feeling that it has. So I've been toying around trying to make the physics a little bit more realistically, and added a few components to on top of that to m make the vehicle physics a little bit more interesting. So I might do a video on that later as well. But anyway, back to Rays as. We the, the probably the biggest news organizational change for us is we have decided on having regular releases. So we plan on releasing every month, with the first release being 0 0.4, which is going to be released on the next demo that we're going to release, which is going to be released in mid-February. And if we look at the plan, we have a lot of things to do. But the closest thing is, apart from doing a lot of adjustments and f and the uh, add-ons to the data system that we have. We load everything from JSON now. So if you have, you have two, you have two characters. You have an attacker and a receiver. Both of them share the same properties. And an attack or a buff or a skill or whatever, it has a list of properties that it adjusts on each actor. And then there's a central combat manager that sort of, uh, each time it gets called. It looks at the attack attacker and what attack it's attacking with, and uh, the property changes that that's getting juice. Looks at the resistances of both actors and then tries to apply them if where where applicable. So you can reduce health, you can reduce energy, you can reduce movement speed if you want to have a slow ability. We try to make it as general as possible so that every possible weapon or skill can uh, can uh, affect every possible uh, property on a character, which is probably going to lead to a lot of interesting things later on because you can make things such as a weapon that um, remove, uh, negates any of the effects of the health packs that you get but it also gets you damage on hit so you can do a more vamp vamp vampiric build you can completely change the way you play the game based on a few different changes to an item and we have this later on as well not this time not this not this uh, this month, but probably next month we're going to implement upgrades. So we have a system. We have a we've we've thought of a system where, for each weapon, you can add uh, 
microchips to them as implants, and they fundamentally change the way the weapons work. So any combination of two or three item uh, upgrades per weapon can can vastly change the way you play the game and make it so that you can try out different builds and build something that suits the way you want to play or would like to explore a bit. Maybe this combination does something that is really cool. But as for... The thing that is most urgent is probably we plan on implementing skills and psychic abilities into the game. So we have a skill system and we have two skills implemented right now. They are spawn projectile and dash. So the enemy can dash with a certain attack and the player has also a weapon where they can dash. And then the spawn projectile is implemented because some enemies they spawn grenades or rockets. And those in turn spawn explosion prefabs, which are actually the thing that's damaging the player on collision. So that is implemented on a few places in the game. So it's gonna, it could be a little bit cool where you have boss fights that have sort of uh, um, a, a sort of bullet hell shoot 'em up style, where they fire projectiles everywhere and you have to dodge them. Sort of like the the combat system in Undertale, where you you all 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 you're doing is basically you're dodging colliders that are moving could mix up the game a little bit. And so for psychic abilities, we thought about implementing, uh, first of all, a system for it. So with a button press, if your energy is above a threshold, you execute a special ability. And the, th and the first thing we thought about implementing was sort of a force push ability, like the, the Fus Ruda shout from Skyrim, where you just push enemies away from you in a certain direction. We thought that could be a pretty cool change uh, switch up to the weapons that you have you have to two weapons normally but if you can equip a third spell which is active uh, that could mix up gameplay a little bit we're working on incorporating this into the story as well race is maybe going to be like uh the main character is maybe going to be like a cyber warrior with psychic abilities today he's he's uh he's been some kind of mental experiment from mad scientists in the past and the, it comes back to haunt him and he realizes he has all these abilities. We already have much of the groundwork in place for that, uh, with the with the, uh, the the major work that uh, Hua has done on the the property system and on the skill system. So basically, everything is in place. All we need to do is implement the uh, what's actually going to happen when you when you press the skill. So it's going to apply some knockback to some characters. Okay. We already have most of that work, it just needs to uh, implement the whole chain of events. You press a button, it executes the skill, and that's it. Shouldn't take too long. And then the final thing we aim on doing is a more intriguing system for boss battles, like much like the old Mega Man and Zelda games. Each boss has a... they have different phases, and between those phases they have attack animation with uh, certain frames or states where they're vulnerable in. Maybe you need to hit them a few times with a weapon before they're exposed. And then they uh, sort of have this weak point where their collider, the only the only part where they can be damaged, like in the eye, is a, tra tradition, is a tradition in Zelda. There's always an eye that you can hit, so maybe it's like a, an energy core or something that you need to hit. Makes uh, boss battles a little bit more, or hopefully a lot more intriguing and, how should you say, it's, it gives it gives hard the harder enemies something unique that differentiates them from the regular enemies in the game, so you can spice up the gameplay, the core gameplay loop a little bit. Uh, I think I'm gonna call it a day there. I thought about going into the <laughs> the property system, which is where we've been putting most of our work these last six months, uh, but I might do that in a separate video because I realized that it really is too much to cover. It's gonna take up towards like 10 or 15 minutes uh, I, I don't know if you're interested in that let me know and I'm gonna do I'm definitely gonna do a video about it later we'll see but for other than that I will be back once we've once we've gotten started working again and you can look forward to the next release in mid-February with that I leave you I'm gonna sort off and uh, go to bed i should go to bed but i i don't know i want to play a bit of more wind before <laughs> and i should edit this video as well so uh yeah until later goodbye